Okay, so this is where we left off part one. Uh, I was getting ready to fit this. Oops. Got the MIG lead around the camera tripod. Sorry about that. Alright, so this is where I left off. I was going to get this to fit in here, which it does. So I'm just going to tack that in. Right, now this has then got to have a gentle bend round so that the end, the other end comes around to the bottom of the jaw. So just trying to bend it round nicely with no sudden kinks in it. Get rid of that. And then this was the problem that I faced last time, that that gap is way too big. That's got a touch there. So, somehow we've got to pull this top down and try and get that to fit. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to hold it. I need to hold it that way around, but I can't really. These tongs aren't much cop. There's some heavier ones, they're better. It's not really going anywhere. It's gone a little bit, but not much. I can't quite figure out how to hold it down. If I hold it down there, it's not going to have enough room to get my tongs in to pull it down all that way. So, what are we going to do? Lump of wood. Bit of 2x2. Two two. I'm just going to persuade it, shall we say, with the uh, rubber mallet or plastic mallet. See how close we are now. Look at that. That's all it took. A few little taps. And that is pretty good now. In fact, the other side has gone too far, so I'm going to have to pull that out. Wouldn't believe that. Just a couple of little taps. Let's pull that down. I'll just pull it out again. Try and keep everything straight and square. Yeah, there you go. Just about spot on. Nice one. So that solved that problem. I'm just taking out any of the little dings. Actually, that's got to go that way around. So. That has now got to have a little bit of a, a bend in it so that it can fit to that shape. So I'm just going to use the V in my 2x2 again. Find the right hammer. And this again, so that's bent actually it becomes apparent it's too much but this again would be where a paper pattern would come in quite handy because you could do a little bit and try it up against the paper pattern so I'm really wishing I had made a paper pattern now I don't know why I didn't I did make a paper pattern when I made my shark which I haven't actually done a video of um, but I think you might have seen it somewhere in one of my videos in the background so that one goes in there quite nicely. Again, I forgot to turn the camera on. So I'll see if I can show you with this one. What I did with the other one was left it um, over bent and then just gently pulled it back as I tacked it. This one's going to be a little bit trickier, I think, because it's because the, the uh, back piece is already rigid because of the other side K okay. let it get there that's it straighten that up 
And that's got it. I'm tacked in. Not a bad fit up, considering I've really messed up putting it together. Right, so this bit, J, is because somehow I've got to go in there. I'm not liking the look, in the look of this. How the hell is that got to go in there? Again, paper pattern would have helped. <laughs> there you go. We live and learn. Right, so. I've got it in. I've got them in. And again, I forgot to turn the blasted camera on. But it took some doing, and I would liken them to the ears on the horse head. They were really tricky. They've got to go in several directions. But I've got them in, and I'm quite pleased that I've got them in. Um, without too much hammering and banging of everything else. It's really starting to look like a skull now. So we've just got to put these pieces in here now. So let's crack on with them. Now I watched Joshua's video and he said you've got to bend them in half first. So that's what we'll do. It might be a little bit too much but we'll see. And then you've got to bend them the other bits the other way. So let's see if I can do that on the 2x2. Two two. Somehow. You end up with what looks a bit like a stylized bird. You'll see what I mean in a minute. That sort of shape with a quite a V in the middle. In fact, it probably needs to be a little bit more than that. That's got to go in there. And actually, it's not too bad. Not a bad fit at all in there. So I might just, it's a little bit down there. That's not too bad. So I might just tack that in and fandangle the rest of it. Pull that up, tack it and then pull the other bit down to fit again. Done. It's gone in quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. I thought that was going to be real tricky but it actually wasn't as tricky as the J. see we're just about done it's all a little bit off square but I might be able to give it a bit of a tap here and there to square things up a little bit but essentially that's the skull part of it done so we're going to start on the the horns now I'm going to weld them to the bench as per Joshua's instructions he also has a, already put a video up on how to do this, which is how I know how to do it. So we're going to weld up the, the pieces to the bench and then just basically pull them around. Now this actually turns out to be a little bit harder than I thought as well. And what I did wrong, I think, well no, I don't know what I did wrong to be honest. I'll tell you what I did on this one, I just concentrated on part A, which is the long part I'm pulling towards me. Now, all I was doing was getting each other part, B and C, to fit with A. 
But what I neglected to realise was that B and C have actually got to meet underneath to make the triangle. And because I neglected that when I was doing this part, it was actually pretty blooming tricky to get um, B and C to meet at the bottom underneath. So what I did on the second one was I tried to do what I'm doing now and then do a piece underneath as well. So I was sort of alternating. Now I'm stuck. I've got to take this off the bench because I've, I'm hitting the bench. I can't get it any further. So we'll have to come off of there. Right. Just clean up how I've welded. So what I did with the second one, I've got this one finished. You can see it's uh, I've actually got the, the middle part together. Took a lot of doing with tongs and hammers and clamps and all sorts. But with the second one, I'm just showing how it's going to go. There we go, it's like that. And so with the second one, because I did it slightly differently by alternating, it's come out a different, quite slightly different shape. So you want to make sure you do both of them the same. You see the, the left one is a slightly different curl to the right one. And that's purely because of the way I, I tack them up. It doesn't show too much, and you probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't have told you, but there is a difference. So I would recommend that you alternate between um, all three parts, the two sides and the underneath when you're putting it together. So now all I'm doing is I'm grinding off all the tacks. I'm going to take all the tacks off to hopefully make the welding go a lot smoother. I do quite a bit of sort of sheet metal type work at one of the places I work at and I found that taking the tacks off makes the welds go much easier. So that's about what I'm going to do. Just clean that up. Just got to do the same with the horns now. Get in as far as you can with the, the grinder. I couldn't get in everywhere with it, but I've got 99% of it. A few bits on the inside there you can see I can't get to. Right in there, but uh, I'm going to use one of these job is what either one of those to get in there and just clean that off it should go in there quite nicely well we'll see <laughs> who knows and hopefully it will take off that nasty sticky mess so there we are we're all ready to weld and I think I mentioned it in the last video, I'm going to TIG this one up, whereas the horse's head I actually MIGged up. And although the MIG is much quicker and much easier, I think the TIG is going to mean I have a lot easier time on the cleanup. So let's give it a go. And what I'm trying to do on this is just fuse weld it where I can obviously there's going to be bits like there that I need to add some metal but that's why I wanted to get a really good fit up that's why I concentrated as much as I could on getting a good fit up it just makes welding it up much easier 
inside there is a real pain. I'm having to do quite a lot of filling. there. I think that's my last world. So there it is. All tigs up, ready to grind. You can see the tig welding isn't the best in the world, but as I say it's going to make clean up much easier. So, how am I going to do this? I have an absolute arsenal of stuff. We've got the flap disc, your good old fashioned flap disc. That's going to do a lot of the work. And we've got this new one, I've never tried this before. It's Vortex Rapid Blend. I'm really interested to see what this does. And then we've got these sort of like flat wheel type things to go in the die grinder. We've got these discs of various different grades. We've got these which are going to be really handy I think. Uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah we've got the <laughs> that uh, I can't think what it's called now but anyway that and the air grinder with the Rolock discs of various different sorts. I've got a box of them. They get in there quite nicely. And, oh, of course, good old fashioned file if we need it. Hopefully, we won't need to do too much hand filing. Uh, what else? Oh, yes, I did forget. We've got some Scotch Brights as well. These are 240 grit. We've got some various grits. Hopefully they will help. Also got this Chinese, it's a bit like a Scotch Bright. It's 180 grit. I use these a lot. I buy a lot of these. I use them for all sorts. I put them on my bench um, grinder thing. So hopefully that lot should get it done. Let's start off with the good old flat disc. crack on. I'll sped this up but there's still going to be quite a lot of grinding. So you might want to skip forwards. But this gives you an idea of exactly how much is involved. Now to get down the sides I'm going to use one of these carbide burrs. I've got various different shapes. I'm going to try this one, the Christmas tree one. Down the side here, under the eye. I think overall, it's probably taken me about two and a half days to do this, I'm guessing. And as you know, I hate clean up. I really do hate it. I start off with all good intentions that I'm going to do it absolutely spot on. I'm going to get in every crevice and every nook and really work at it. And then I get bored. I don't know how long. I think that's about an hour in. And it's getting there. It's all the welds are off now. We just need now to sort of tidy things up, try and get all the um, marks going in the similar direction so that they all go one way on each piece. So that will be the next job. 
I'm going to start with some of these. I think this is a 180, and I've got it down really low. I found again, if you run these discs too fast, they tear up in seconds. If you turn your grinder right down the speed, down to about I don't know seven or eight thousand, they work much better. They last an awful lot longer. They still wear out pretty quick, but they go on for longer than they would do if you run them at high speed. Right. So that's looking pretty good now. Not brilliant, but it's it's all I'm going to do for the time being until I've got the uh until I've got the horns on. Once they're on, we'll finish it right off. So I think that's the next job, get on with the horns. Again we're going to start with the flap disc, get as much as we can with that. These are actually a lot trickier than I thought to get into. Now I've beveled the uh, the joins. I haven't or rounded them slightly. I haven't made square joins because there just isn't the material there from um, just fuse welding it with the TIG. Probably would have done if they'd been if I'd migged it. There would have been a bit more material. But you can see I've sort of rounded the joins. I still think it looks quite nice. Now again they're up to where I can go so far. I'm just going to try the finger sander in that inside seam. This little flat disc is doing quite well in there. And then these things have proven pretty good on this job, these little rowlocks. You just screw on, screw off things. You can get scotch bright types and sanding disc types and all sorts. And now we're going on to the back onto the 180s. Try and smooth things off a bit. You see how it tears the corners off if you catch it. That's all it takes is just to catch. A corner and it tears those edges off. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now. It's still not brilliant, and there's still marks in here where I struggled to pull the centre together. You know, what with um, tongs and hammers and clamps and things, but. Uh, it's pretty good. Both of them aren't too bad. And I can't think how many hours this is so far. I can probably work it out. I started about half past ten. It's now about half past two. It's taken me a fair old while. So we're on the last stretch. Attach the horns. Again, I'm going to use as little filler material as possible here. Although across the top I want to put a fair bit in because I want to blend them nicely. There's a few gaps underneath which I'm not really too worried about. So, done. Again, you can see the horns aren't quite level. One's a bit higher than the other. I'm going to clean that off. And that will be my lot. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to start with the flap disc again. Then I'm going to try that um, blending disc. See how that performs. That's 
pretty good so far. Let's try the other disc. Alright, this is that blending disc. It's actually rather nice because it sort of conforms to the material but you can get quite a straight line with it. I rather like that. Right, let's call it a day. You can see it's not quite square. The left one as you're looking at it is a bit higher than the right one and it's curled in a bit more. But blind man would be pleased to see it. I'm a bit fed up with it now. Not all that keen on it now. But I think that's purely because I spent the last God knows how many hours handling it, clean, trying to clean the damn thing up. Well, there you go, it's not too bad. Looks pretty good. Quite pleased, considering I didn't have a, a paper pattern to follow. I don't think I've done too bad. I've taken it home to show the wife and it actually looks better out in daylight, proper daylight. In the workshop you've got the lights, all the different lights reflecting off it. So this actually looks better. I'm a bit more pleased with it now I've got it home. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it helps you if you want to have a go at it.